This is Gamer Weekly, bringing you the latest of what the video game scene has to offer. On this episode of Gamer Weekly, I have Manlio of Drakkar Dev, and we're going to be talking about Wartech Fighters. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Gamer Weekly. Sorry for the uh, another vacation. I uh, just moved into an apartment, so we've been uh, moving and all that stuff. So it might not be a true weekly show for a little bit, but um, I'm trying my best. So we've got everything a little more occupied in there. So thank you for being patient. And uh, with me today is, I hope I say your name correctly, Manlio. Yeah. Yes. Hello, everyone. Manlio Hello. is part of Drakkar Dev, and he's currently working on a game called Wartech Fighters. Yeah, Wartech Fighters. Someone uh, used the abbreviation in a very weird way. <laughs> <laughs> and someone asked us uh, often, uh, did you intentionally did this kind of trick of words? Uh, Actually not. Uh, yeah, we're, we're all re- aware, of course, of, uh, uh, of the meaning, but uh, it's not something that we actually did uh, with that in mind. I, and I, of course, have to apologize for my English because I, know, I, I don't speak English, English usually, so please, for those who are listening, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> you were good. No worries. Um, so for Wartech Fighters, what exactly is the game for those that don't know okay Wartech fighters uh Wartech in our in our game is basically a giant robot you can imagine giant robots in the term of pacific rim or japanese anime like gundam or evangelion uh, or transformers um, and it's a game about giant robots fighting in space uh, in a setting that is of course sci-fi and uh, the players basically play the role of one of the captain of this uh, rebel uh, fleet that is, that is fighting against uh, an evil empire called Zatrus. And uh, there are some sort of uh, um, events in, in the story. There are betrayals, there are destruction, unexpected destructions, and, and there's a lot of shooting and fighting. Um, what uh, characterizes this game uh, in comparison to others is uh, surely the fact you can play the game uh, shooting from a long range and then you can go close range and engage combat with sword and shield like uh, some Japanese anime. So our intent was basically to summarize all the aspects of uh, giant robots genre uh, in one game because uh, we are fan of uh, of course of giant robots and uh, pacific cream uh, from from the hollywood side and from the japanese side let's let's say it this way and so we would we tried to join the two visions together to have uh, just one game when you can feel uh, the weight of uh, giant metal robots and you can do the wonderful things you can see in Japanese anime. So, um, so are we going to get a lot of like the psychological aspects of something like Gundam or Evangelion? Oh, really not. Uh, <laughs> this is, uh, that, that is what, uh, actually I don't like too much because, uh, uh, I'm from. I, I'm more from uh, for for the Hollywood side <laughs> of the uh, of the giant robot uh, thing. Um, I think Japanese anime, and I'm not criticizing because uh, I, I'm not the right person to do it. Um, I'm not criticizing the fact that Japanese often uh, spend perhaps too much time on the uh, on the on this aspect uh, about. Uh, what the, 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 the characters are thinking or remembering or struggling with something. Uh, it's a game about action, basically. So there are, there are dialogues with uh, other characters, but they are all um, for the sake of the, of the story and to understand what you're going to do. 
have nothing about so oh my oh my god i feel so lonely <laughs> or something <laughs> similar no 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 there, there's no such uh, kind of uh, uh, dialogues or lines in general it, it's more straight to the action it, it's an action game there are of course some uh, tactical choices you can do uh, in your hangar when you upgrade your your watek watek it means uh, giant robot uh, and you can research new weapons and new technologies to enhance the combat uh, skills of your robots but uh, it's more action based so for for like the the design of the robots that you guys um used were you using like different um like different kind of robots that you were seeing in those animes and kind of just using them as like a like a reference or oh sure uh, it's, it's a bit complicated but, but i'll try to be uh, as short <laughs> as i can <laughs> uh be because uh, of course we'd like to have um, very customized uh, designs like uh, some uh, Gundam's uh, models have or um, other kind of designs like more Pacific Rim that they are more uh, scratchy and rusty uh, not not too polished but we have to we have to basically found uh, a middle way because we are also we have to um, make the the robots uh, do a lot of things because the robots do uh, just not just they don't just uh, shoot from afar they also wield a sword they can even climb on uh, spaceships they destroy from inside they do a lot of things they are quite uh, difficult to do with a very cumbersome um, equipment on, on them so we had to choose not to have them too much big, too much uh, expanded the space, like giant wings or or something similar. We had to, to keep them more human shaped, if you understand me. So, so something there is more controllable in terms of uh, gameplay because you have to uh, fit inside a launch tunnel. You have to uh, move. Uh, smoothly with sword and shield without too, not, not too much mesh compenetration and uh, there are a lot of things that when you see uh, when you look at uh, a Japanese anime you don't don't mind because all the movie all the anime is done is done to show that things but if you have a game and you have, you have to do a lot of things with that robots you can't have uh, the Because uh, there are limits, of course. If I had uh, a robot with giant wings, it won't fit in the hangar, for example, or something. But by the way, we try to be as much uh, uh, closer to uh, to to that that designs that we love so much, like the, the Gundams or Pacific Rim or, or Transformers, even. So, do you make any Gundam models? No, no, personally, no. Oh man, <laughs> I, I'm a programmer. I have a life. <laughs> <laughs> Your life is programming. <laughs> no, no, my life is my family, and my kids. Uh, programming is, is just my job. Gotcha. I was about to say because I build a lot of Gundams, so. Oh. No. <laughs> you you have you're very lucky to have all this time available. <laughs> Perhaps I, I will do it uh, when my kids will be older, and uh, so I, I can do it with, with them. Because I will say that if you decide to start doing like Gundam models, um, there are some that don't really take a whole lot of time. And I say that, and it's like, eh, it takes like an hour to make like a small one. So uh, yeah, I, I used to just to do something similar with the fantasy mi miniature. It's not robots, but but I understand the time you have to uh, to play with. I wanted to get into miniatures, but I was afraid of like for one painting because I can't paint to save my life, and um, it just they're very expensive. <laughs> I say oh, yeah, that. In fact, I, I did it just for a short period of my life. 
I decided instead of doing miniatures that I would play Magic the Gathering. And then I was like, what am I doing? I'm terrible at this. Okay, just a hobby. <laughs> at least for me. So you guys got published with uh, Green Man Gaming. Um, so how exactly did you guys come across that? Yeah, nice question. Uh, because uh, we, of course, tried for a quite long time to to see and talk to other publishers, and we actually did. Uh, but uh, one of the m most publishers we, we contacted was just uh, a form on a website. If you have a game, please uh, fill this form and we'll contact you. And unexpectedly, uh, Green Man Gaming replied very soon, saying, uh, do you have a demo? <laughs> and we sent the demo, and just in a, less than a couple of days, we have we've been contacted for the first Skype call. Uh, it was quite quite straight, I would say, uh, in comparison to other publishers. We we talk also to Microsoft and to uh, I don't know I don't, don't remember any other names. Uh, uh, game um, Gambitious and some of them something else. I don't remember. The other names, so but 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 basically it was quite straightforward uh, because uh, they liked the game just for from the first minutes I, I could say uh, the game for them was something they uh, didn't have in their catalog because it was quite different uh, in comparison to all the other games they usually publish is more uh, perhaps action oriented and um, I don't know. It's, it's different. <laughs> if you see the uh, there are games, uh, they are quite good, uh, as you as you said, uh, but are quite different too. So it was a lot of like, just tears of joy happening there. You're like, yes, finally. Spread yes, finally. <laughs> uh, and of, and of course we we uh, at least at the beginning very being very careful because uh, I don't know, <laughs> if something is searching for you and not you searching for them. <laughs> There could be some catch in the middle, uh, but uh, apparently it wasn't so this thing. So I've got a a question here. Um, obviously, since it's an interview podcast, I don't know why I even. <laughs> uh, so which robot do you think, out of all robots that have ever been in media, what robot do you think is the greatest robot oh actually i don't know because <laughs> yeah I, I i'm going to uh, to 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 respond to you <laughs> if you give me the time uh because uh, um, if you take a look at the robots for example in the 80s and 90s that was uh, the robots uh, we and our team grew up with because we were, we were kids and um, they are actually quite bad looking in comparison to what you see now. In, so there are versions of that robot like uh, Gundam or Evangelion that in the first uh, years were just okay, but if you, if you look at them now, they are quite horrible because they have a, a very bad combination of colors and they have um, shapes that are not so cool like the ones you can see now. So I don't know what is the best robot now because there are lots of robots that look cool and uh, yeah, and they can be considered the best. Uh, even in our game, you can choose from three kind of uh, base robots from which start to uh, start from. Sorry. Um, is uh, you have the, the the lightest one, lightest and fast, you can uh, you can call it, and the heaviest and the slow and the middle one. But these three robots have three uh, basic designs that are completely different. Uh, the first one is very smooth with the uh, smooth curves uh, and all is shaped like uh, like a, a, a very fast motorbike. You can see. You can say um, while the third one, the heaviest one, is more uh, 
uh, have more um, flat surfaces and more bulky, so you can thinking uh, think of it uh, like a tank. Uh, while the middle one is uh, basically not a combination, but something completely different. Uh, so it, it, uh, on a, on an aesthetic point of view, you have the the choice both of the performances and the aesthetic. Of course, during the game, you can customize aesthetically your your robots uh, with uh, colors and liveries and patterns. Uh, you can put uh, basically whatever you want uh, within the limits of the game, and, uh, and and you have you can also upgrade the parts and you can change the arms, the torso, the head, and the legs, and those upgrades of course changes the shape of the robot itself. So we, are, we have been inspired by at least three kinds of robots. Uh, we can say the, the second and the third kind of robots is more inspired like from uh, um, Transformers or Pacific Rim movie, while, while the first one is most Japanese, if we can say. You can, if you have seen the last trailer, the launch trailer, uh, there is a, a sequence when you see a lot of combinations of, of robots one after the other uh, and in a couple of seconds you see basically at least 50 kind of robots <laughs> that can be done with uh, uh, with a game we calculated that there are at least some thousands of combinations you can do so basically so, every robot is awesome I don't know. It's, it's a matter of, of perso- personal taste. Uh, someone prefer one kind, of, certain kind, of, kinds of robots. I, I've seen, for example, um, YouTube videos or something. Someone playing the game uh, that was very satisfied with the robot. Uh, that I, I, I saw it and say, "What is this kind of crap you, you did?" <laughs> so it's. I think it's quite personal. It's a personal taste about it. Uh, I, I like. A different shape for for my robots when I play, uh, but, but it's, I think it's a good thing for the game because you can, you can shape your robots the way you want with the colors you want. Uh, you can you can do it uh, very military like when uh, with a military green and the pattern of camouflage, for, for example, or you can have it uh, shining white and, br- and red like uh, uh, like Japanese robots. There's some sort of choice, I can say. So I guess the final question I have for you is, uh, well, when does Wartech Fighters come out? Wartech Fighters is already out. Well, then <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, it, it was released uh, the 16th of this, uh, this month. So uh, tomorrow is one week. There is a lot of comments already on the Steam uh, discussions. Uh, we are working like mad because uh, uh, there are a lot of people requesting things. Ah, I would like to, my robot to do this thing. I would like to, to do this thing. So, uh, I'd like to, to change the color of the eyes. <laughs> or a uh, lot of requests. Of course, none of them can, can could be actually done. But uh, we are working really hard to to make every, everyone satisfied. Well, then everybody go and check out Wartech Fighters. If you enjoy robots, and I mean who doesn't, you should check out Wartech Fighters. It's available now on Steam. And uh, how much is the game? How much is the game? Yeah, uh, the game uh, we calculated internally with our testers. You can play for at least six hours. But uh, what we saw uh, from uh, the people that actually bought the game to now, uh, I've seen also 14 hours and more. So it basically depends on how curious you are because all the maps and the missions that are in the game hides a lot of secrets and uh, um, treasures to be found to have more materials. Materials for now, for, for us, is uh, resources you can use to upgrade your your war tech. And uh, there are also, there is also a survival mode. You can basically play forever. <laughs> and, 
and there are challenges. There are special simulated missions you can use to uh, gather more materials. Um, of course, there is you can replay wh whatever mission you want, but it, it, it's obvious. Uh, so basically, if you go straight and skip all the cutscenes, all, all the dialogues, and you don't care about the story, just play and want to shred everything in uh, high, high the view, you just I think uh, play for at least six hours, uh, and that's the first, just, just the first part because those part, this, these missions there are in the early access version, uh, just uh, I can say one fourth of the entire game. So I'm quite uh, optimist uh, the, the whole game will be much, much, much longer. Well, it's available now. It's fifteen dollars on Steam, and. Uh, Man, Leo, thank you so much for coming onto the show. I greatly appreciate it. Thank and you, it, Justin. And if anybody out there enjoys the show, subscribe. And uh, hopefully we'll have some more stuff coming out in the weeks to come as well. Thank you so much for being patient and understanding about um, everything schedule-wise because I do have a life as well. So I have to attend <laughs> yeah. to that as well sometimes. So, um, But we should be back to our regular uh, schedule. So thank you guys so much for listening. Check out War Tech Fighters and uh, also check out all the other episodes of Gamer Weekly if you haven't as well. Thank you guys so much and goodbye. Bye.